Stand aside, Captain America. We've got you covered, lad. You got it. Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today I'll be subverting superhero movies into an all-out British affair. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For today's video, we've rallied against the all-American stranglehold on the superhero genre to propose something different, and we think something better. Probably. Well, maybe. Number 5. Origin Stories The standard origin story needs two things. An idea for where, when, and why a character gains superhuman powers, and a training montage showing their development. Usually there's some kind of accident, scientific oversight, supernatural events, or the discovery of an unknown other world. And while nearly all these things could happen over Friday drinks at the Dog and Duck, we'd wager that the best superheroes are those you'd least expect. The shelf stacker at Poundland, the guy at Greg's who's always knackered, or the weather reporter on an unusually windy day. Don't worry, there isn't. But having said that, actually, the weather will become very windy. And obviously, they'd live in an out-the-way village with some obscure sounding name like Wet Wang, Puckle Church, or Botten in the Beans. All real place names, by the way. Swap Peter Parker's spider for that daddy long legs on your ceiling, and we're away. The Batman of Bitchfield who got bit by a pigeon. That's something we'd pay to see, as long as it's narrated by Stephen Fry with a David Bowie soundtrack. Oh, we can be heroes. Just for one day. Number 4 Costumes As cool as superhero costumes are, they're not exactly hard to miss, or especially practical. What if Spider-Man needs stealth mode? What then? The full body leotard is a bit of a giveaway. In Brit hands, our heroes would rock an understated style, slipping into spandex for special occasions only. <laughs> James Bond basically has slick suits copyrighted, but no one suspects shorts and t-shirt man. The Brit badass is ready to fight crime at any given moment, even when he's dressed like a dog walker. I see you're wearing a sports vest. <laughs> and obviously his wardrobe is all weather ready and fully stocked with Factor 50 sun cream. But the Brit hero has an eye for fashion too. Even the doctor stays on trend, and he's had all time and space to sport something other than Converse in a trench coat. And then there's Sherlock Holmes, who makes a deer stalker look dapper. Is it a cat? Why's it got two fronts? It's a deer stalker. Number three, battle scenes. <laughs> According to the Avengers, a battle's not a battle until entire cities are reduced to rubble. But is carnage really worth the cleanup? There's only so many skyscrapers that can count as collateral damage, and you won't find many outside of Canary Wharf. Why not just relocate the Hulk to Legoland and give him the run of the place for a few hours? Hot Fuzz has already proven how intense a model village scene can be. But of course, the bad guys do need bringing to justice, and despite what Simon Pegg says, these things very rarely blow over. Brick characters bring unrivaled versatility when it comes to their weapon of choice. Thor's hammer or the sonic screwdriver, Cap's shield or Sean's cricket bat, we know which we'd rather wield. Just watch an EastEnders omnibus for more far-fetched fight scene ideas, but don't ask Ian Beale's help. I've got nothing left! I've got nothing left! <laughs> Number 2 Villains I feel like being a right bad bastard. Everyone knows that Brits play the best baddies, and it seems like every comic villain requires an all-rounded Oxford accent these days. But why not smash the stereotype and give the antagonist a rural ramble instead? The countryside is far from crime-free, five minutes in Midsummer will attest to that, and a West Country drawl could actually prove more ominous. You can do what you bloody well like! Think Samwise Gamgee, but swap the potatoes for machine gun kills. Alternatively, Brit supervillains could clearly channel the UK's rich reputation for gritty gangster flicks, set the action in East London, and have an army of Danny Dyers plot global domination. And we're thinking exact replicants too, like a clan of Cockney Oompa Loompas stationed at the Queen Vic. If that's not the stuff of nightmares, nothing is. Number 1 Heroes Here's where the Brits went out, no question. 
A small island we may be, but we're responsible for the Beatles, Bobby Moore, Stephen Hawking, Vivian Westwood, Wallace, Gromit, Rachel Riley, and Superhands from Peep Show. That is the one thing I stand against, a thousand times no. We've redefined music, fashion, the internet, we invented almost every sport ever played, and the US just can't help but copy everything we put on TV. So a couple of superheroes should be a stroll. But there'd be no chest-pumping, glory-hunting glamour poses to match our American counterparts. Who needs waffle like that when you can save the world and still be home in time for Pointless? Get a zero on that show and you truly stun amongst the gods. Still going down, still going down, still going down, you got it! Yeah! And Brit heroes know what's worth fighting for too. Yes, a crazed inventor with a robot killing machine is something to worry over, but there are worse things in life, like a 10p price hike on the Boots meal deal, or half a hop knob at the bottom of a coffee cup. You dip a knob knob, it's like, again! Again! Marvel, take note, we're coming for you. So what do you think would be better in British hands? Let us know and we'll make it happen. You gotta admit that's sexier. And I die in disgrace. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo UK and subscribe for more great content.